Now here is the opening sprint. And it'll be won by the Jumbos. On the sidelines, you'll see different colored markers. Yellow is 5 meter, red is 2 meter. And it's a good defensive possession for Middlebury. The goalkeeper is having trouble. Oh, that is an wide open net! You cannot give up on the play. It's a goal for cap two. And it's one nothing. Tufts, Rika Generoso made Middlebury pay. So in the first minute, Mika Generosa gets the Jumbos on the board and now it's time for Middlebury going right to left in dark. Generoso, a first team all-conference player in 2018. And it's going to be an exclusion on Tufts, the first power play for Middlebury inside the five meter area. So six on five for 20 seconds. Now moving ahead, will launch, nice denial, a second effort, no good, so the 6 on 5 can't be capitalized. Good stop there for Rami Abeldarhem, the first team all-conference goalie for Tufts in 2018. About a minute in, 1-0 Tufts in the white on the goal by Generoso, who was able to get a wide open shot. Tufts going left to right. Middlebury applying the pressure at mid pool. Each possession is 35 seconds on the shot clock. Looks like it's Jessica Vela, cap one, I believe, the keeper. Vela, a sophomore from Marion, Ohio. This Middlebury squad has only one player from Vermont. These are really good schools. The acceptance rates are under 20%, if I'm not mistaken. Littleberry will get a wet pass. Now we'll dunk it inside the Tufts. Fires, fire to the right side, and that is through. And that's a goal for Cat 5 in dart. Elena Priebus, and it's now Middlebury in dart. One, and Tufts in white, one. It was a solid effort. And now here is Tufts trying to regain the lead. Tufts is going left to right and Middlebury gobbles it up. Has to be careful. Avoiding the play in the first minute that got the goal by Generoso. Well, that's a good feed inside the two. Lost control with 21 in the shot clock. And Abdul and Abu Dharam, the senior goalkeeper, will have had a good outlet. A couple minutes into the game. We're at one apiece. Ordinary foul on the Panthers. Tufts has the ball. And it will be an exclusion called against Middlebury, so the first power play for Tufts. If you have three exclusion fouls against you, you will be out of the game. And it was out of play. Goal throw here for, I believe, Jessica Vela. Now to the near side. Middlebury going right to left. We'll fire to the left side out of play. And it will be a goal throw. Dennis Kenny is the official at top. Steve Sargalski, I believe, is on our near side on the bottom. Ordinary foul on Middlebury. Got about three minutes or so to go in the first quarter. Fifth seeded. The fifth ranked Panthers won and the sixth seeded Tough Jumbos in white one. We were fed inside the Middlebury two. Seven on the shot clock. He's gonna take a shot here. 
Good save. Was a little short anyway. And Middlebury for a chance to take its first lead of the contest. Middlebury inside the five. Now at the wing on the tough end. 12 on the shot clock. At the top of the wing. Well, launch it to the left side, and it finds the nylon. Whoops. And it is now Middlebury in dark. Two tufts in white. One. That was a 2-0 Middlebury run. Head coach Brian Goodwin. 2002 Division Three Men's Club Coach of the Year. Goodwin led the Panthers, the ladies, that is, to a couple of New England Division titles as a New England member from 2012 to 2018. It'll be Tufts ball going left to right. This is our first of four games here at Middlebury today. Also, four games tomorrow, but we're only doing today in North Atlantic action. Ordinary foul. Oh, look at that. There is no way of denying that one. And cashing in on the goal is Kathleen Coogan, a senior, cap eight in white, and it's now Middlebury in dark two and Tufts in white two. And we got ourselves a evenly matched contest so far. All the teams we're seeing today have at least three wins in division play. And it will be fired to the back of the nylon and through. And it looks like a goal for Cat 9 perhaps. Sorry for any incorrect scorers. That would be Maya G with the cash in. And Middlebury back in front. Three to two over Tufts in white. Have to be wary of the game clock and shot clock. Now at the top of the five over the end line. Old throw for Middlebury. Ordinary foul on Tufts. Oh, she's going for it. She'll fire. Stopped. And it will be Rami Abeldarham with the outlet. Going left to right for Tufts. By the way, Abeldarham, 2018 Honorable Mention in CWPA All-America. Tufts now approaching the Middlebury end. Shot clock under 10 will fire the left side, and that's wide left on a goal throw for the Panthers. Who lead 3 to 2 toward the end of the first period. Shot clock at 25. And it's going to be an exclusion on Tufts, so for the second time today, it will be a power play for Middlebury. 0 for 1 so far. Inside the 2, now at the top of the key. Crazy egg beater motion. Oh, that is a beautiful pick. And I don't think it went through. Nice stop by Rami. Abeldaram. Now going left to right. The Jumbos. Tufts is on a three game winning streak. Middlebury on a four game win streak in division play. Tufts needs to get a shot off. And it'll be an exclusion on Middlebury, so Tufts on its second, six on five. That did not cross. And that will do it for the first quarter. After seven minutes, it's the host fifth seeded Middlebury Panthers in dark three. And the Tufts Jumbos in white two. 
And it was a very good seven minutes. What does the second quarter have in store? The Cap 7 Head Guard. This product was designed specifically to reduce the risk. You can't prevent a concussion, but you can definitely reduce the impact by wearing a Cap 7 Head Guard. The most important thing when you look at this cap specifically is the dimples. This has been tested by University of California, Irvine and been proven to reduce the impact by 25%. To put the cap on specifically, you have to have your hair wet. Okay, it's just like putting on any sort of swim cap. So I want to hook it in on the front of my head and then pull it down around. It goes on really quickly and easily. If you try to put it on with dry hair, you're likely to pull your hair out and you're likely to rip the head guard. Now, depending on the cap you have, I recommend doing this in front of a mirror. But as you see again, hooking in on the front first, and even without a mirror, I can just feel around and slap the cap right on. I highly, highly recommend this for any full contact drills during practice. It's the no brainer when it comes to reducing the risk. Cap7 head guards, check it out at cap7.com. Players are getting back in the pool, getting ready for our second period. Right now, it's the host Panthers of Middlebury up 3-2. to two. Middlebury and Dark going right to left, Tufts and White left to right. Middlebury in its three contested games this season has scored double figures in all of them. And it's the host Panthers winning the sprint. Going right to left, looking for its first multi-goal advantage. At the top of the five at the Tufts end. We'll dump it off. Swig it back. Egg beater motion. Dangerous pass. Middlebury is on it. 11 on the shot clock. Egg beater motion. 8 on the clock. And it will be a foul on Middlebury. Tufts possession. Tufts had the first goal of the game. Middlebury then tied it up. Now Tufts is going left to right. And there is an exclusion foul called on the Panthers, so Tufts on its third power play. And this time, takes advantage. It's the first power play goal, and it's Kathleen Coogan with her second. And it's now Tufts and White free, and Middlebury and Dark free. Down a minute into quarter number two. So Tufts one of three on the Lady Advantage. Either offsides or maybe a ball under, so Tufts gets it back. Tufts had lost 10-9 to in its first game of the season to Yale. That's Yale's only win so far to my knowledge. And it's another exclusion against Middlebury, so the Pampers we're in a bit of trouble, and right now in a heap of trouble after the goal by Cap 10 in white. Jenna Kuppa. That's the second power play goal of the quarter, and Tufts back out in front, this time by a count of 4-3. to three. And I think Brian Goodwin has seen enough from his Panthers, which have given up two straight with 5.39 to go in. The first half. The March 4th CWPA North Atlantic Division Player of the Week is Jenna Kotcher. 
the Middlebury sophomore from Mountain View, California, scored 11 goals in three division games March 2nd and 3rd at Yale. Kotcher helped the Panthers complete a 4-0 weekend with wins over Bates, Yale, and the U.S. Coast Guard Academy to accompany a 5-0 forfeit defeat of Bowdoin. Kotcher wears cap number four, so keep an eye out for her. Or Middlebury. So Middlebury down four to three. In case you're wondering, there hasn't been an overtime game in North Atlantic play in quite a while. We'll see how this game plays out. Middlebury going right to left in dark. Tufts in white, left to right. Middlebury used a full timeout. Not a bad idea. If Brian Goodwin is a smart coach, and he knew his team was in trouble giving up two straight power play tallies. Panthers now need to get back on it. There's a wet shot, a save for Rami Abeldarim. Tufts looking to take its first multi-goal lead. Two in the first, two and counting in the second. So far for the Jumbos. Now on the Middlebury side. Ordinary foul. Shot clock winding down. And Middlebury reads it beautifully. It's a turnover and could be open daylight. Here is the opportunity and she sees light at the end of the tunnel. Well done for Cat 5, Elena Priebus for Middlebury. And now it's Middlebury in the dark caps, 4. And Tufts in the white, 4, with under 5 minutes to play in quarter number 2. That ends this 2-0 run for the Jumbos. Priebus now with, I believe, a pair. Tufts has a very good men's club program. Runner-up finishes in the Division Three National Men's Tournament the last few seasons. That might be Jessica Cavella with the stop. And it's going to be a power play for Middlebury. So six on five for 20 seconds for the Panthers. So when the clock goes to 15 seconds, it will be even strength unless there's a turnover out of play or a goal. Crazy egg beater fires to the right side. Booyah! Middlebury has the lead of game again. And I think that's Mei Mei Chu. Emily Mei Mei Chu with the power play tally. And Middlebury is back in front in the dark caps. Five to four with about four minutes or so to go in half number one. Two and three in the first, two in the second for Middlebury. Two in the first, two in the second for Tufts. First meeting between the two clubs. This is Tufts' third season as a club. Middlebury has been the club program for a long time. Has also been a member of the New England division a couple of times. Middlebury is a two-time North Atlantic champ, 2010 and 11. Tufts going left to right in white. Ordinary foul on Middlebury. We'll dump it for the hole. And for the third time this quarter, the Jumbos have a six on five. They have capitalized on each of the previous two. Two of four on the Lady Advantage. And it'll be another ordinary foul. We'll fire. And that's off the post. Is there a second effort? I believe it's going to be even strength. Oh, look at that. And that's a ball under. 
I believe there was also a substitution made for Middlebury. Middlebury the ball on the near side with about three minutes to go in quarter two. The hand under water while holding the ball is a ball under. That's how the Panthers got it. Shot fired and batted down and secured by Rami Abel Darham of Tufts. There's a reason why she is the rating first team goalkeeper of the division. Right now these teams are playing like there's no tomorrow. But tomorrow, there's only 23 hours as tomorrow's daylight savings, we spring forward an hour. Foul called on tough, so Middlebury will look to go in a quick transition. One on one. For the hole. Will fire the left side denied by... Abeldarim, I think. Or the post, a two meter will be awarded to Middlebury from the near side so fresh shot clock for Middlebury on the tough end after this game we have MIT versus Wellesley at around 3.10 p.m. Eastern to the right side and denied by Abel Durham if it's her Now Tufts looking to tie it up. Tufts led by one a couple of times, including scoring the first goal in the game. One point led four to three for giving up a pair of goals. Fans here a bit rowdy. They are definitely into it. And all the games might be closer than last weekend's. Push off called against Middlebury. Possession for the Jumbos. Wearing the white caps down the goal. Got a minute or so left in the first half. 5 4 Middlebury. Ordinary foul. Shot fired and it will be secured by the keeper. There have been eight combined power plays. Three have been converted, two by the Jumbos. Shot clock at 21. Middlebury trying to cross mid pool. The deflection and takeaway for Tufts. Tufts looking for numbers. Middlebury applying the pressure. It will be taken care of by Middlebury going right to left. Both teams have very quick swimmers. It's going to be an exclusion called on Tufts, so fourth power play for Middlebury. One of three on the lady advantage. Egg beater motion, moving ahead, fires! It was a really nice try though. But the crossbar said nay nay. One for four now are the Panthers on the power play. Three seconds left. And that will do it. For the first half. And we got a good one here in Middlebury. After one half. It's Middlebury in dark five. And it's Tufts in white four. Each team had two goals apiece, and we have a good one heading into the second half. Hi, I'm Wolf Weigel, and I'm Brad Schumacher from Cap7 International. Today we're going to talk about pressuring on the perimeter and not getting excluded. So one of the main things you want to think about is you really want to focus on your legs. You don't want to be grabbing with your arms and sinking above the water. 
A lot of players, when the ball comes and it's passed over, they'll just grab with their arms and take a quick foul. Okay, what you wanna do is show your hands, use your legs, and alternate, okay, with your arms out, using your legs to go from one side to the other if the player's moving, okay, and trying not to foul. If the player lets go of the ball, I'm not on him, I am already have no contact, and I'm not gonna get excluded that way. The way you can get excluded is when the player doesn't have the ball, and you're grabbing, and then the player sells it, and pretends like they got really dunked, that's when you'll get excluded. Or as the ball's coming in the air, and you're caught holding, that's when you'll get kicked out, okay? Another way you'll get fouled, or excluded, is if you play very aggressively and dunk with two hands. The referees are told to watch for dunking with two hands. So you wanna have one hand at a time, working in concert with your legs, okay? Breaststroke kicks and showing your hands. Okay, in this drill here, we're gonna work on pressing, okay? Using our, focusing on our legs, showing our hands, and really driving the player out and not getting that foul. Hopefully the rest of our players are pressing high in the lane and we can really eat up a lot of time on the clock here. I'm Wolf Ligo, three-time Olympian and co-founder of CAP7. No other ball in the world has the grip that a CAP7 does. Check out this super sweet suit. If you're looking to customize your suit design, go to www.cap7.com. Leading a collegiate club can be a daunting task. That's why we want every program to have a leadership team of free people. Each club needs a coach that can run and organize the practices, administrator to take care of the paperwork required by the school, and a recruiter and social coordinator that coordinates the team parties and brings in new members. One of the free should always be an underclassman so you never graduate all the leadership in the same year. Creating a leadership team is a success to having a secret, a successful program without burning out the leaders involved. That is a secret to having a successful program without burning out the leaders. We enter our second half of play with the host, Middlebury Panthers in dark, leading 5-4. to four. The Panthers were free in the first, two in the second. Tufts were two in the first, two in the second. Panthers led free to two after one. Trailed a couple times at one point, four to three in the second quarter, and then Middlebury went on a 2-0 run, and that's how we stand at five to four. This is Scott Samuel De Royce. Hope you are enjoying Saturday, March 9th so far, our first of four games in North Atlantic action today here from Middlebury Natatorium at Middlebury College in Middlebury, Vermont. After this game at 3.10 p.m. Eastern, the circumstances permit, we have number 7 MIT Engineers against number 4 Wellesley the Blue. In the third quarter, it will be Tufts in white going right to left, Middlebury in dark, left to right. I'm glad you are... With us on the CWPA network, these broadcasts are free, courtesy of CAP7 in the CWPA. Now we'll have our third quarter sprint. I believe Steve Sargalski dropped the ball. And it'll be possession, Middlebury going left to right. When we fell, backhanded, and stopped by Rami Abeldaram. Possession Tufts. And each possession can have a maximum of 35 seconds on the shot clock. Unless there is a deflection out of the play, turnover, goal. 
20 on the shot clock. Tufts coming off of a 10-free win against Bates last weekend. Middlebury off a 5-0 forfeit against Bowden. Five on the shot clock. Oh, this might be a shot clock violation. Indeed. Well done for the Panthers. That is the first shot clock violation. And the Panthers are looking to go very quick. Trying to dump it off inside the Tufts too. The cross. Wow. Bangs it home. Well done for Cap 4. It's Jenna Kotcher, the reigning North Atlantic Player of the Week. And it's 6 4, Middlebury. That would be her 12th goal of the season. So well done for Kotcher. Right place, right time. That is, if we correctly identify the goal scorers. So, about a minute or so into our quarter, Middlebury has its first two goal lead. And Middlebury is looking for more. Look at this play now. Ordinary on Tufts. We're in the Tufts end already. Open water here for the hole. Shot. Deflected out of play. Nicely done by Rami Abeldarim. It'll be the second two meter quarter of the game for the Panthers. So it'll be from the near side. Looks like Virginia Stanley is trying to get a shot off. Instead, inside the two on the tough end. The cross for the hole. Shot clock winding down. Ordinary foul. Will fire. And will Durham denies it. Boy. The way the Middlebury's playing to begin this second half. Quite aggressive. When Middlebury has to play MIT. At 6.10 p.m. Eastern today. It's going to have to play like that. In order to take down a team that has won 12 straight North Atlantic Division regular season contests. MIT's 12 game regular season win streak it would be on the line. Against Wellesley at 3.10. Yeah. It was with a second left, and it will be possession. Middlebury going left to right. Now for the hole. And it's going to be another corner. It's exactly what Middlebury needs to do. In order to take Tufts away from its game. At the wing outside of the Tufts five. Ordinary foul called against the Jumbos. Now egg beater. Fire. Wide right. I have a fun fact for you. If I'm not mistaken, the last name of the Disney character Dumbo is Jumbo. And the Jumbo is an elephant. With possession Tufts, the Jumbo's down two. Two in the first, two in the second, none in the third. Middlebury, one, three, two, and one on the scoring. About four minutes or so to go in the third quarter. Tufts going right to left here on the Middlebury end. Another ordinary on the Panthers. Oh, what a loft in there. And Tufts back on the board. Looks like it might have been a goal for Cat 10, Jenna Kuppa. If it's her, she might have a pair. And the Jumbos strike within one. It's Middlebury in dark six. And the six ranked Tufts Jumbos in white five. Maybe three and a half, three minutes to go in the third quarter. Here in North Atlantic West play. And that is into the back of the net. <laughs> 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 
departed. My bad. Actually, yeah, I had it right. It is now seven to five. And it'll be an exclusion on Middlebury. Sorry if there were any confusion. Tufts on the power play going right to left. And it will be stopped. So the score believed to be seven to five. Couple minutes to go in the third quarter. Sorry for any scoring confusion. Goals were scored not that far apart. That's why I might have been confused. Being confused is a good thing with the way this game is going. So that means it's going to be tight. Littleberry, I believe, up a pair. The cross, and that is denied by the whole set, the whole guard of Tufts. Rika Generoso, also a first team all conference player from a year ago. She had, I believe, the first goal of the game for Tufts. Might have been a ball under or push by Tufts. Possession Middlebury going left to right. And we have a timeout in the pool with a couple minutes to go. Barring any scoring inaccuracies, it's seven to five. As a reminder, don't forget to turn your clocks ahead of one hour as daylight savings is tomorrow. We don't want you to show up to the pool in either an hour early or an hour late. That would not be good, so this is your warning. Make sure you follow it. Also, we have an announcement. Due to severe winter weather in Minnesota, the CWPA has postponed this weekend's Heartland Division Tournament at St. Mary's in Winona to March 16th to 17th. Please be on the lookout for an updated schedule in the coming days on collegiatewaterpolo.org. So we have a good one here. Middlebury, I believe, in the lead. So now out of the timeout. More prepared today than they should. Middlebury with the ball. And now Middlebury getting the pressure from Tufts inside for the hole. Oh, that's a good feed to the side. And that is dangerously close to the rope. And I believe a corner will be awarded. Now Middlebury with the egg beater will fire it home. And it's a goal for Cat 8, May May Chu. And I believe it's now 8 5, Panthers. With a minute and 38 to go. In quarter three. Three in the first, two in the second, three in the third for Middlebury. Largest lead at three. Two, two, and one the scoring margin for Tufts. Tufts will fire it out of the yard. Middlebury doing a real nice job this second half so far. For a minute and 15 to go in the quarter. Middlebury going left to right. 
looking to improve to 5-0 and zero in North Atlantic Division play with three regular season games to go. Another ordinary. We'll fire it off the pipes. Tough's very fortunate because at this rate, it would be tough to overcome the deficit. I think we might have a 30 second timeout to set up the play. It's 8 to 5. Middlebury. Middlebury has not led throughout, though. Tufts has led it by one a couple of times. But not for long. And it will be possession for Tufts. And just like that, Tufts not quite out of it. Might have been a goal for Cap 2, Rika Generoso. And it's now 8 to 6. If it counts. Gotta like Brian Goodwin and Tom McGinn for their strategy. Not taking their time. And there will be possession still with Middlebury at the wing at the five meter area now in the corner. Back to the wing. Ordinary foul. Shot clock winding down. Fires out of play. Tufts not out of it. Not much time left in this quarter. Tufts with two goals in each quarter so far. 11 on the clock. That's going to be an exclusion. Now we'll need to fire it off. And that won't go. We got a good one after three quarters. Through three, it's Middlebury in dark, eight. Tufts in white, six. Will seven minutes be enough to decide a winner? And is to be determined when we return. The Cap 7 Rebounder is perfect for poolside or in pool workouts. It bounces the ball right back to you. It's great for working on passing or just for accuracy training. Take it out of the pool too. You can have a catch, whether it be baseball or softball. Get up close with the tennis ball for hand-eye coordination. Or hit the hardwood and work on your dribbling and passing for basketball. Or even footwork drills for soccer. Setup is simple. First, take the rebounder out of the box and lay it flat on the surface with the net facing down. Pull the stand up and place the single bar in the allotted spot. Then, slide the peg on the bottom and place the pin up top. You can adjust the angle by removing the pin and sliding the single bar to any of the five positions you like. Get your Cap7 rebounder at cap7.com. We're entering our final quarter of regulation with Middlebury and Dark leading 8 to 6. The CWPA YouTube channel is your number one video source for everything water polo. Check out our Tip of the Week series, Inside Water Moments, Highlights, Game of the Week, and more. Visit YouTube.com and search CWPA Water Polo. This is Scott Samuel David Weiss here. Our first of four games on the day in North Atlantic action. 
We also plan on bringing you four Northwest Division games from Springfield, Oregon, later today. And also four Northwest games from Springfield, Oregon, tomorrow, the circumstances permit. It's Middlebury going left to right and dark with the two-goal lead. It looks like it's a hold and it might be a power play. If not, it was a hold. Tufts would like to get within one. Ordinary foul. Jumbo's in the Middlebury end going right to left and right. Will fire off the pipes. And I think that might have been a goal. Pardon the technical difficulties. But it's 8-7. to seven. This game got a lot more interesting. Pardon the glitch we had there on the goal. The goal did not count. It was an offensive foul. So sorry about that. So it is eight to six. So Tufts down by two. Middlebury three in the first, two in the second, three in the third. Tufts with two in each quarter. And it's going to be an exclusion on Middlebury. And it will be possession. T Jumbos going right to left and white. 22nd power play. This is the 8th lady advantage for the Jumbos. And it will squeak through. And Tufts is not done yet. Jenna Kuppa, I think, might have at least her third in white. Cap 10. Boy, oh boy. Middlebury, which had an 8-5 to five lead at one point in the third quarter. Holding one. It's a 2 nothing run for the Jumbos. Littleberry has to be careful here. Tufts has been involved in one one-goal game this season. Lost 10-9 to to Yale. It's going to be an exclusion on Tufts. The first power play in the second half for Middlebury. Those Panthers looking to add... Insurance inside the tough end. Now we'll back it up at the top of the key. Now in the wing, perimeter passing. Egg beater motion, another dry pass. We'll fire. Whoa! Slammed to the pool ground. Rami Abuldarim did not want to give it up. It will be a timeout, I believe, for Tufts. About five minutes to go in regulation, maybe less. And this game, not over by any means. It's the fifth-ranked Middlebury Panthers in white and dark eight, and the sixth-ranked Tufts Jumbos, the defending North Atlantic Division champs, seven. Last year, Middlebury had five players named to the CWPA Club Scholar Athlete Team. All five of them are on the current team right now. Harper Bardwin of Virginia Stanley. That was outstanding. Excellent. 3.71 to 4.0 GPA. Emily Leskowitz, Erica Visayon, and Eve LeBaum. Also solid grade point averages. Well done. So, Middlebury... Not just known for having a good program, but also good academics, great academics. The Jumbos down by one. And the Piers will be Tufts with the ball going 
right to left in the white caps. After this game, it will be our second game between number seven MIT and number four Wellesley. MIT last year was the one seed in the division, had actually been eight and zero in the regular season, ended up in third place because of a one goal loss to these jumbos in the semifinals. Now the play will throw here for Middlebury. Wants to give up, doesn't want to give up anything. Middlebury wants to remain unbeaten. Eggbeater motion inside the two for Middlebury. Creeping ahead for the hole. And Rami will get the ball. So here's a chance for Tufts to tie the game. It was 5-4 Middlebury at halftime. Middlebury has led for the tidy the second half so far if I'm not mistaken. And it'll be an exclusion on Middlebury. I think it's already the ninth power play for the Jumbos. Six on five for 20 seconds. This is crucial. And Middlebury able to get a call against Tufts so the Panthers avoid damage. Middlebury, its first season in North Atlantic since 2011. Looking the way it had been from that season. And it's going to be an exclusion on Tufts. Middlebury, one of five on the Lady Advantage now. That goal came in the second quarter. Couple minutes perhaps to go in this one. No margin for error right now. Middlebury just needs to hit the bullseye. There's an ordinary foul. The wing of the five. Fire off the post. So even strength. It's going to be possession for Middlebury here in quarter four, each seven. One zero run in the quarter. Now dunks it for the whole set. Ordinary foul, Middlebury will attain possession. Boy, the Panthers are having a hard time getting it off. And Tufts is called for an exclusion. And if you have three exclusions, the player will be ejected. And we got a timeout. Might be a 30 second. If not, it'll be a full. To get some substitutes in there. CWPA website is now mobile friendly. Make sure to visit collegiatewaterpolo.org to stay up to date on league news, schedules, and new initiatives as we continue to grow the sport of water polo. This is where we are at. 8 to 7. The Panthers, I believe, led by as many as 3. Tufts led by as many as 1 on a couple of occasions. We are doing North Atlantic West action in Middlebury, Vermont on the CWPA network, courtesy of CAP7 in the CWPA. This is our second straight water polo season that we are bringing you regular season games for free thanks to CAP7. We used to do pay-per-view for each tournament. Now we still do pay-per-view pay for the National Club Championships. If the circumstances permit. Well, obviously, Tom McGinn and head coach Brian Goodwin wanted the Panthers to settle down. With the lady advantage here, one of six are the Panthers on the power play. 
Time of the essence right now. And the egg beater on the perimeter pass. We'll pass it back in the perimeter. Egg beater motion. You gotta launch it sometime. They do. Easy two handed save. And boy, this has not been a fourth quarter to remember so far for the host Panthers. By the way, Middlebury cracked the top 10 division free rankings this week, had not even been considered last week. Ordinary foul. Tufts, I think, will, will tie the game with a goal. Don't want a foul here. Shot clock running down. That would have violated the shot clock. And I think it did. So now, Middlebury with a chance to potentially up its lead. Now in the tough end. Maybe a minute or so to go. We'll back it up in the tough end. Panthers on it in the dark caps up 8-7. to seven. And another huge call. One of seven on the power play are the Panthers. Two is better than one. So if you're the Panthers, you're going to want to capitalize. Look at that! Bullseye! And that could potentially wrap it up. Virginia Stanley, cap 11. With the power play knock. I believe it's now Middlebury in dark, nine, Tufts in white, seven. But the game is still not done. Maybe under a minute left in this one. And it will go the other way. Middlebury might have just wrapped up this game. Looking for its fifth win in five tries this season. Tufts would drop the three and two with a loss. Tufts last year was the number four seed, was four and two in the regular season, seven and two overall. Tufts was the division champ. Middlebury is stopped. And it looks like we we're going to have a stoppage here. There's nine seconds left. If there's nine seconds left on the clock, as I think Brian Goodwin is on the bottom left of the screen, now he's off. The head coach from Middlebury. You got to go quick. You got to get a stop, drop, and pop if you're tough, if this is the correct score. So Tufts now needs to take one here. Oh, got bottled up. And that might do it. Nope, it's still possession Tufts. That will do it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the final. Middlebury holds off the Tufts Jumbos 9-7.